G'day everyone and welcome back to another Breakdown Wednesday where I take character designs and then I break them down as if I was going to be making it. And then at the end of the video, we discuss whether or not it would break me to actually make it. So today I'm very excited because this design is actually one that I am planning on doing. Whether or not I actually do it, you know, that's another story. But this one has been living rent free in my head since I first saw the artwork. And it is the Pillsbury Girl as a magical girl uh, by Three Lime Marie on Instagram. I loved this design. Literally when I saw it, I just went, <laughs> that's me. And then I showed it to Terry and he went, it's you. And I guess that was basically, yep, that's going on my list. I have to do that. I just love everything about this. I love the fact that she is just this beautiful kind of girlish figure. I love that she just has all of these fluffy skirts. I love the ruffles. I love all the details. I love the fact that it's baking orientated. And I love the fact that she's not stick thin. <laughs> I'm just like, yes. Thank you. I feel like I could definitely pull this off. <laughs> Side note though, I have never eaten anything by Pillsbury. Uh, it is an American brand and I've just never had the opportunity. So I may or may not be talking to some people in America to see if they can send me something so I can at least try it. But I love the design so much. I love the concept of her being a, you know, magical girl. I love that her weapon of choice is a rolling pin with hearts on it. Like just there's so much that I love. So let's crack on with it and let's see how I would do this because this has been living rent free in my head, like I said. So let's get cracking. So I think that we'll just quickly touch on the wig and get that over and done with. So for the wig, this is a very full, very long, uh, white gray kind of wig. Okay. So we're going to need at least two wigs that I will need to weft together. I may or may not have already ordered them. <laughs> I wasn't even sure that an Arda wig would be enough, to be honest, because she is so, so full. And to be honest, the hairstyle itself is nothing too crazy. So you've got, you know, very long kind of wavy hair at the back. Obviously, when a real person is wearing this, it is just not going to be that full, like in terms of it being right out here. I did something like it for Flora, where she had like the crazy hair that was out here. It was not a lot of fun to wear and I want this one to be fun to wear. So I am going to do two wigs, weft them together so they look very full and voluptuous, very similar to my aerial wig. Uh, and we're gonna go with that. <laughs> the face framing is so adorable. So I love the fact that she's got these little parts down here that frame her face. And that's also good for me because I find that because I've got a big head, wigs sometimes kind of push back if like it's a very hard hairline so I love having a bit of face framing just to kind of cover my ears and I've got quite long like sideburns I feel so you know that will also help cover that uh, and for this kind of swirl in the front um, it's you know a cinnabon uh, but it's also a little bit like an aurora curl I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that um, I'm gonna probably use a whole lot of steam and slowly steam it into place um, I want to do something like this for my uh, what you call it my my jigglypuff but I just didn't have enough hair there it might be something that I will need to harvest hair from other parts of the wig and then essentially sew that in and sew it in so that it's behind the cap. But we'll get to the cap later. Let's move on and work as always from bottom up. So for the bottom, we have these very cute shoes. So they are pumps. Okay. And they have a strap. They've got the strap, but the strap seems to be very much just connected at the back. Um, and doesn't actually provide much support. So they are quite, you could probably get away with low heels, which I plan on doing because I don't like wearing very high heels at all. Uh, I have ordered a base. They are coming in white 
and then I can paint them. And that's just simply because trying to find this color brown is very, very difficult. And what's more is that it also has this down here. So this is a Cinnabon spell. Okay. And what I will be doing there is I'm actually going to be crafting that out of foam clay. Uh, just so that it does have a bit of flexibility and so that that way, you know, I can glue it on there and I might need to make an alteration to the the, the shoe here by adding a lip. Uh, but I plan on like making those details out of foam clay uh, and that should work, I think. Moving on to the stockings. Uh, so I've decided that for these, because you can get blue, like striped stockings um or stay up socks uh, realistically that's what they are but honestly they've been very difficult to find in the right shades so i am actually going to make this and these will be made out of lycra i'm going to try um and find uh, the two blues in lycra otherwise i'll just get the light blue and then dye a whole heap of the darker blue and then i will end up attaching these onto um either dance tights or I will actually just pattern it out and use like a lycra that is a skin tone lycra and actually make them as full length um, stockings. So essentially all of this is one piece. And I might actually do that because that way it's going to stay up and it's going to be very comfortable for me to wear all day. For the garter, that is going to be some white, probably cotton or something to that effect that is going to be on some sort of elasticated base um, that will be connected to the stocking itself. So I may, I haven't worked it out fully how I'm going to do that, but because I want the ruffles to be the same as what's going to be on the top, as well as the pink as being the same as this probably, um, it will be a case that I'll probably need to, because these won't be stretch fabrics, uh, I'll need to find a way to elasticate them and then connect them to the stockings um, just so that that way they will stretch with the thighs. And then we have the cutest little cookie buttons, uh, which I love. <laughs> They're just fake buttons and they've actually got a few more here as well. And how I plan on doing that will probably be foam clay and I will sculpt them out and paint them up and then put them on there. And so they'll be three on this side, three on that side, uh, and that will probably be foam clay. Uh, I love it. I, I've Since doing Toff, I really enjoyed uh, kind of mixing together fabric with foam, foam clay, and even like 3D printing. So this actually doesn't scare me that much anymore the only thing that scares me is i may have to do these ones with press studs on the back of them so that i can take them off and i can actually wash these so i'll, I'll probably have to do that that way just because i can see that these could get real gross very quickly but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that you know whenever it happens all right so those are the legs down let's talk about the skirt Mm. So we have a three layered skirt because this top one is part of the apron. So we'll discuss that in a, in a moment. And to be honest, this skirt and this uh, blouse, they look like they're probably meant to be a dress. I would still do this as a two parter, but I would make them out of the same fabric just because that way it's going to make my life a whole lot easier rather than trying to get, connect so much fabric in this dress to the waist seam that is connected to the bodice and the bodice is holding all of that weight. So I'm still gonna split it and I'm going to do, sorry, dogs are just having a moment. Uh, so I'm going to split it and I'm going to have three skirts uh, that will be attached to a waistband underneath here. So the first thing though, because it's very, very wide and it is very, very fluffy. Now, this is gonna be a two-parter because honestly, you need a structure for that support and then the skirts themselves have to be very, very fluffy. So underneath all of this, I'm gonna have probably a sort of crinoline, uh, crinoline, <laughs> or some sort of like hoop skirt kind of structure 
uh, just to help support the weight and to make sure that it goes out rather than flopping down, which is something that would happen with gravity and reality. So similar to my Red Riding Hood where I created like, it was like a disc, I'll be doing something similar to that, but I learned from that one and it will probably just be a crinoline that will come out from here to about here. So it will kind of sit just off my legs and it won't actually feel like anything crazy, but honestly, it will make the world of distant difference to holding up those skirts. And that will probably be one, maybe two hoops at most, um, that will just be on a little waistband that I'll connect up underneath all of my gar um, my garments. Um, and that will be all I need. I won't need any kind of petticoat on top of it because of how full the skirts are. So I'm from Perth in Western Australia. It is very hot here. And so the least amount of layers that I am wearing, the better. And also this brings me to my next point in terms of fabrics for the main dress. So I am currently, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm currently leaning towards the fabric being cotton. I know I haven't used plain cotton as like a cosplay well, other than Mario, but like for a really big cosplay for quite some time. And I just think because the amount of detail that's on this and because the detail is what I want kind of the focus to be, um, I'm kind of leaning towards cotton, though I haven't ruled out uh, for the skirts and also the top, the blouse, to be taffeta. Uh, I will play around with that a little bit more before I go ahead and make this. But those are the two fabrics that I'm planning on doing. The, the kind of apron and everything up here, that is going to be cotton. Absolutely. Anything that's white is going to be cotton. Just because um, chef's apron, that sort of thing, I kind of want it to be cotton just to kind of give that vibe. But the magical girl vibe... I'm just like, oh, that could also work as taffeta. But then I'm like, there's a lot of detail on like the blue and the brown that I'm like, mm, I don't know if taffeta is necessarily the right way to go because it may be just too much shine as such. Anyway, let's talk about how I'm going to work on these skirts. So these skirts, I would say are more than a single circle skirt. It would either be 1.5 to two times circle skirts, um, sorry, circle skirts uh, for each of them uh, because they're very, very full, which means that the circumference of hemming them will be very, very a lot, <laughs> which I'm not looking forward to, but you know, I do love a good lot of flounce and uh, this is an epic flounce. So yes. So we've got three layers. The longest layer is this pink one with the white. So pink with a, with white border. Okay. I'm probably thinking like I'll probably do a bias, a bias tape kind of border that goes around just because that will give a really nice curve. Um, I can't use ribbon on any of these curves because it's just, it, it will not work. Ribbon will work fantastically in straight lines, but any type of curve, it starts bunching. So it, it doesn't have the stretch and bias binding does. So I'll probably end up doing um, some sort of the bias tape as the border along that. Uh, the next layer up here is the cookie, the cookie layer, which is the chalk chip. Ah, oh, I love it. So the chalk chip, you've got once again, more bias, um, bias binding as like the tape that goes around. But all of these like little chalk chips that you see in all these different sizes, I wanna do that out of foam clay. Uh, I just think that it will look very, very cute. It'll be very, very light and it will just continue with that flounce and I think it will look beautiful. Then the top layer is this blue. And once again, we've got more of the bias binding and I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to do this squiggle because I think that, that is going to be too, uh, too curved to get with the bias binding. So I'm thinking that I may need to cut out a design that does that 
and then applique that on and then do like a satin stitch kind of finish which would look really really cool but it will take forever um but for the cosplay right i otherwise i may experiment and see if i could just do it all as a satin stitch but i'm not sure how that will look i would need to i need to do some playing around with it um because i'm worried that if it was just a satin stitch doing this entire kind of pattern it may be too big and it won't read nicely we shall see and the last thing i'll say for these three skirts is that i will actually do a uh, horsehair braid hair braid uh down the bottom so that it gives that that beautiful volume and i have already ordered that and that is coming my way and i got a whole lot of meterage and hopefully i've got enough but i do have some spare as well so we'll make it work we'll make it work then moving on to the apron which is so cute uh it is you know a two kind of part up obviously it's going to be all connected but it's going to have so we've got this waistband in the middle with a little bit of lace then we've got like a front section um we're not going to worry about the collar just yet because i actually think the collar is attached to the shirt so we've got the front piece here which has a double ruffle you've got a white ruffle and then a brown ruffle so we've got two ruffles okay and we've got the lace here okay and then we've got this very full skirt once again but it's only halfway and that you can see it kind of folds over at the edge so i think it only goes to like the front kind of to the side and then stops i don't think it necessarily goes all the way around um it looks like it kind of curves back on itself so i will probably need to figure out a way that i will be essentially connecting the edges to the top blue skirt so it doesn't just fall forward um, because it could very well do that um, and you know keep that fullness it will have horsehair braid in it as well it's white and then the top has all of these uh confetti on it <laughs> which i love it's uh, like the birthday cake or some sort of type of cookie that they have and for this one i actually will do all of the sprinkles or hundreds and thousands whatever it is that they're called i will do those out of rhinestones i'm very excited by this because i want to get a whole lot of rhinestones in yellow blue and pink and i want to get like some long ones i want to get some round ones i want to get different sizes and then just go like hell for leather and sticking it all over that kind of piece down the bottom i think it will look so cute the other thing is is that this has piping to it as well so unlike the others which is like flat ribbon kind of look this has like a frosted look on the end okay and how i want to do that is i want to do it as piping but i want to do the i want to make the piping myself and i want to create a very textured piping so i want to create a rope that is inside that essentially is um not like even and i kind of found this out by mistake that i can do that when i was doing the piping for my latest penelope um i just need to play around with that a little bit more and essentially create imperfections in the kind of friendship braid that i made in that and make it thicker as well and then uh, what I plan on doing is then obviously covering that and where the imperfections are, it's going to lump out. And with that, then I'll be able to have like this frosted look. So imperfections are sometimes on purpose. Very excited about that. And then the bottom of it is another cookie, uh, cookie design, which I think is very, very cool. Um, I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that. I may very well just get the fabric and I will airbrush that and create a cool kind of like look to it because it looks like it's like a swirl of some sort it's not it's not chop chip it looks like it's probably a swirl um, so it could be fun to play around with just airbrushing different swirls on that fabric uh, with fabric paint or fabric dye so that's exciting then we've got this pocket right in the front <laughs> which is going to be like a little straight, little round pocket, rounded pocket 
uh, with some bias binding on here. So the blue being bias binding. Okay, there's a lot of bias binding on this as I'm like looking at it. We've got some scalloped edge, which I would probably do in the same in the lace or a kind of one that matches up here. It won't be the same because this is obviously smaller. Uh, and then for this button, I will try. I, I'm not quite sure yet, to be honest, because she's got this button up here and she's got this button up here. And I kind of want them all to be the same. So this one is uh, the Pillsbury logo on it. And I'm tempted to do that as a 3D print. And if I do that as 3D print, I want to do this one as a 3D print and that one as a 3D print. And the good thing about a 3D print is that obviously you have like a then erased kind of image, but you also have something that's very, very light because a 3D print is light. You know, the, the plastic is really light. And um, I just think that that could be a very easy way about going it, but it does mean that what I'll need to do is create essentially three buttons that are the same, but one of them have a, a P in the middle of it. And then these ones just be plain, even though they're drawn slightly different. This one's got a bit more detail than this one. I would probably do them exactly the same. So uh, for this one, basically for the buttons, I'm just going to like buttons. We're just going to do 3D print. Okay, lovely. Then we've got the cookies again, which is so cute. And yeah, that's basically the apron. The back will have a lovely big bow. I have spoken to the artist and uh, she did say to me that she imagined that there was a bow in the back. So I'll make that big bow uh, with probably very short tails if I have tails to it um, that I, I will figure out probably they'll just be like little devil forks uh, kind of tails in the back. Uh, but yes, so that is what I'm planning on doing there. Or actually, they might just be curved out to kind of match the bow in the front. Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. If there's tails, there'll be that. Let's move on to the blouse now. So the blouse in the front, you can't really see. And that's fine. I'm going to do this as probably just like a princess cut kind of blouse so that it's fitted to me. Um, so it's not too baggy. Um, just so it's comfortable as well to wear and that it's fitted into the skirt because the skirt will be worn over the top of the blouse. Um, and then basically from there, the sleeves are attached. So it will be all this blue, the same blue as this little puff sleeves. I'll use my puff sleeve tutorial to create that. So we've got the puff sleeves. Um, and then we've got the little cuff here with a little bit of white ribbon, we've got little bows. Oh, I love that there are bows. Uh, and then lace. And this lace uh, is very, very special um, because it's got the blue kind of embroider um, kind of finish. And I found it. So I found it on eBay and I bought four yards of it. It was the last that the person had in stock. So I've got that for that and also for the cap as well, which I'm very excited about. So I've already got that. So I've got to find a blue fabric that matches that. <laughs> but yes. Oh, and it's here as well. So yes. And we'll see. We'll see. I may actually use it down for here as well, even though it's not necessarily drawn as such. That might be going a bit far. I might just keep it as that and do that as something separate so it matches that one. Anyway, um, so the the collar of this one is going to be quite an open neck collar that will have this, um, this neck sheaf that would be attached to it. So I do believe that the neck sheaf will be connected to the blouse um, and that will then be pulled over onto the apron. And so that's just a white neckchief with some um, brown gold bias binding, um, the lace, the little kind of falls, and then the 3D printed button in the middle just to kind of lock everything in. Also at the neckline, we have this little bit of a cookie kind of set out, which I plan on doing probably as, you know, just in fabric, the same fabric as this one, uh, with some more little chop chips, just kind of bring it. Um, and yeah, so that's what I'm going to do that. I'll have a back zip in this just for ease of getting in and out. I do not, I, I do not feel like trying to do a side zip 
and uh, I think that it just won't work anyway because there's the kind of the head has to get through the neck chief so yeah I'm just gonna do a back zip it's fine. And that is the main kind of outfit. So moving on to the headpiece now. So we've got the little bows, nice and easy. I've done many bows before. So we're gonna do the bows out of the same fabric as the pink skirt with the devil forks, uh, with some little kind of ribbon or bias binding just at the edges, just to kind of make it real cute. And then we've got this headpiece. Ah, this headpiece. So, yes. <laughs> the Cinnabons up here, which I love, and also the Cinnabon up the top. I will probably sculpt that out of foam or foam clay or a mixture of both. So these will be foam and foam clay. Okay. Foam clay. Um, and I will need to create some sort of structure within the hat to ensure that it holds up the, um, the weight of that one because it's quite large. Even though foam and foam clay are very light when they dry, um, I will need to figure out how I'm going to do that. Whether that is going to be a buckram based hat or a very stiff interfacing um, I will need to find that out or whether it's a case that I'll need to kind of reinforce the entire structure with wire uh, that is something I will need to play around with and the fact that it will come down it comes down so a chef's hat is kind of like large and goes straight up where this one is actually quite narrow and then goes out so I really do think actually the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, yeah, there's going to be some sort of wire structure that will need to be in there um, to help support the, the, the structure of the hat and then also to keep up the, the Cinnabon at the top there. Um, and then the Cinnabons that are on the side like Mickey Mouse ears, I want to attach those uh, probably e probably directly into the wig itself. So all of this I'm thinking I might do on a band, but I'm probably going to do the band on the inside of the wig um, and actually have them so that they can screw into the wig. Uh, just so that that way there's not like a headband as such that is on my head more than this front one. So that's what I'm thinking at this point in time. I've never made anything like that. So I'm excited to give that a try. I've seen other people do it and I'm like, that looks like a good idea. Uh, for this one here, oh, actually the bows are connected to this headpiece, I think. Maybe. I think that they are. Okay, if they are, I will connect them to this headpiece. If not, I'll just have them as clips and just clip them in. Um, but I do like the idea of connecting them to that headpiece uh, so that I can just have it all together and it will always look good. So I enjoy it when everything looks good without, you know, having to readjust 3000 things. So for this headpiece, we've obviously got the lace again, uh, which I really, really like. And then we've got this kind of little piece of blue that kind of matches this. But I don't quite know what is going on here. Um, I'm not quite sure what those are meant to be or whether it was just a case of make it look interesting. Um, I may very well, I don't know, maybe get some rhinestones and put some dark blue rhinestones to create some sort of pattern. That is up to my artistic expression when it comes time to doing that. Um, I will probably not do anything like large beads or anything like that. I'll probably find some sort of thing that will be long and relatively flat just because I don't want too much going forward because there's already so much happening on like this part of my head. So I want to try and limit that as much as possible. Um, and I will probably connect all of this on a headband um, and then the headband can just pop on my head um, after this has been screwed on. So that is how I'm planning on doing that. So the, the rolling pin is interesting. <laughs> um, I 
have never attempted something like this before and I am a little bit like concerned about this I have a feeling that how I'm going to do this will either be out of foam or if I can possibly possibly wrap my head around it do it as a 3d print I would love if this is something that the inside could possibly light up and the outside roll around so that it looks like a magical girl item <laughs> but I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to figure that out and to be honest I'm not planning on making this for any particular cosplay competition uh, at this point in time so I'm not sure that I would necessarily commit to doing that because if I committed to doing that I would probably want to like light up the Cinnabons as well <laughs> that I mean look if I want to go extra I can go extra with this like imagine like as she's powering up like her head just starts like glowing orange and red <laughs> I kind of like that idea um but I'm not quite sure if I would necessarily go that uh that far with it but yes, either foam or a 3D print if I can kind of work that out in my brain. Foam, I reckon I'd be able to figure that part out. Um, and that way, at least it's not going to be something that, uh, you know, I, I, I will struggle with too much. Uh, I'll probably need to make sure that there's a rod inserted in it so that it keeps its shape. Um, and it will also be a con safe prop um but yeah we'll, we'll come back to that that will probably be the very last thing that i do to be honest because uh that that is mm, that is that is a choice um but yes it's it's fine it's absolutely fine oh, but now i'm thinking about it i'm like the white glaze of the cinnabons if i was to do that in like the in like a translucent foam and then have the lights behind it that could work oh and then I could put the batteries inside of a hat ah oh, that could be fun <laughs> all right I think I'll sit with that so the hat and the rolling pin will be the last thing I do um, because I'll need to think it all through <laughs> all right now for realsies that is how I am planning on making this Pillsbury girl uh, as Magical Girl by Three Marie, Three Lime Marie. And I love her. Now I've broken her down, I love her even more and I just want to start her. Um, I'm very excited by this project. Will she break me? Quite potentially. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you have to do cosplays that scare you a little bit because it makes you excited, it makes you you know really want to learn new skills so i i see this as a fantastic challenge and i'm up for it uh i think i might give it a little bit more time and maybe start her in the new year i'm not sure uh but i adore her so yes she may break me but i'm gonna i'm gonna give her a go all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it if you would like to see a character that you want me to break down in one of these videos, please in the comments let me know what it is and who knows, maybe you'll see it happen. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Regular video is out on Saturday and I'll see you next Wednesday for another one of these. Bye.